Hey guys, back out here at Mohican State Forest again. Uh, the plan this trip is just to do a little overnighter, a little backpacking loop. This trip's not about mileage, it's more about uh, enduring the elements. And by that I mean when I woke up this morning it was 15 degrees and tonight's supposed to be colder. So it's going to be uh, definitely another experience. Last time I was out here I was expecting cold weather and didn't get it. And that was nice and all but I'm ready for some cold weather. You can see I got the blue foam pad here to double up with my sleeping pad, my blow up sleeping pad. Hopefully I can stay warm tonight. The plan for tonight is to stay at the parking pack site number five. It's really cool, we're in like this pine forest right here right now. I won't be far from the car so in case I really do have to bail, uh, I can just hike out in the dark and go sit in the warm car and sleep or something. Well it's a pretty good site. Uh, there's a few flat spots here that I'm looking at that I can uh, use to set up my tarp. There's a good bit of wood already in the fire pit here left for me and uh, there's a lot of deadfall around. That's part of the reason why I picked this site was because it's kind of further away from the more heavily trafficked sites at Mohican in hopes that there would be more deadfall and more wood around. So that's the plan and time to get busy, get warmed up. Oh, man, Velcro is tough right now. Toes and hands. Sorry if you guys can hear that chainsaw. He's really going to town over there. Hopefully he's going to be done here soon because some people are trying to make videos out here. Layering wise for this trip, I have this fleece I'm wearing. I have an Under Armour compression layer, which I highly recommend these. Oh, that's cool. It's starting to snow. I actually have a black Under Armour that I've had for like seven years and washed it hundreds of times, literally, and it still holds up, it's still warm. The only reason I bought this one is because I found it at Marshalls for 10 bucks, you can't beat that. It's probably a $40 uh, base layer. And I have my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer jacket. I will probably be sleeping in all of these tonight, well I know I will be. Sleeping wise, I have the blue foam pad and the Climate Inertia Ozone and a Costco down quilt. Uh, these are rated to about 55 degrees. The only cold weather testing I've ever done on these is I keep one in my vehicle and at my, on my lunch breaks at work, uh, cover up with it and I sleep in my lunch breaks. Uh, a lot of guys will turn their vehicles on with their heat. I'm more hardcore than that. So I just use my down blanket and it keeps me warm. The thing about these quilts are, if you use two of them or if you fold this in half, you're pretty much doubling your uh, down fill. And it's uh, really a lot warmer that way. And being that I have a mummy bag that actually has some decent room inside of it, I'm going to try to triple this. Triple fold this over, put it on top of me in my mummy bag with me, and I'm guessing that's going to add a lot of warmth. I really have no idea if this is going to be enough clothing and down to uh, keep me warm tonight. So we'll just have to see. Always oh, that last stake you can't get in. Not bad, this will do. Same configuration as last time. I wanted to try something different this time, but it's gonna be too cold. I definitely gotta keep that wind out tonight. This wouldn't have a lot of foot room for a lot of people, but I'm not even six foot tall, and it will do the trick tonight. With my sleeping bag that takes up nearly all of my backpack. All right. Got the, uh, the good old Walmart sleeping pad here. I don't know about warmth wise how good these are, but I know if you're a weight conscious backpacker, they are very, very light. This one I actually trimmed a couple inches off the end and off each side. This right here, I keep zip ties to hold this thing together. A little bit tricky to get them off, but it's not too bad. My Ozone, which is a very thin sleeping pad, has to be uh, used in conjunction with another pad if you're going to use it in the winter. And when it's time to go to bed, I will reconfigure all that and be comfy cozy. Really soft, I don't know what this is, but it's really easy to cut.
Well, I found this really nice big pine tree. It was down already, but it wasn't on the ground. It was uh, about two or three feet above it. That's what I was looking for, so it's nice and dry. Uh, I really respect the rule of only uh, dead fallen wood. No, even if trees are dead standing, you're not supposed to chop any trees down. So you always want to scavenge uh, what you can find in national parks and national forests. I gotta take a break from cutting wood. I feel like I'm gonna start sweating here real soon and that's the last thing I wanna do right now, sweat. Get all my clothes wet and freeze in the middle of the night. So if I need something to do when it gets dark out to keep my body heat up, I'll cut some more of that wood up. But I got a really decent wood pile here started, so that should last me a good while. I don't know if you can see that snow, but it is coming down. So I'm just splitting up some of these smaller pieces here into uh, stuff that's about pencil size, maybe marker size. And I'm even feathering up a couple of them just so they take to the flame good. You can make a bunch of curls, split up some of these, and that should be an easy fire start then. One thing I learned is that you need to find good dry wood to start your fire with. You can basically burn anything once you get it going, but you need to find stuff that's not laying on the ground People say you shouldn't baton with a, a more companion knife because it's not full tang, which means the blade, the metal doesn't go all the way to the end of the knife. It stops like right in here or something. But I don't baton anything down bigger than no this normally. Just enough to uh, get my fire started. Anything else, I'll just burn big logs. But it does the trick for a little stuff like this. I really wouldn't try batoning anything down that was bigger. And if I break it, it was only 15 bucks, so I'm not gonna be too sad. I already got tons of uses out of it. Plus, it gives me a reason to buy another one, huh? Something I normally always forget to do. We can take the back of this knife, it's really sharp. Well, it's sharp since I sharpened it. Companions actually aren't sharp, but I took it to the grinding wheel, and it's like really rough now. But you can use the back of the knife to get all these really fine Fine little shavings, it's like sawdust, which will take to the ferro rod very, very well. Oh man, let these sit too much in the snow. They're actually kind of wet, but we'll still give it a go. I had a flame, but. I think I let them sit too long. I knew I shouldn't have did that, but I did. Well, it's a ripping fire right there. The camera died and then I just ended up getting my lighter out shortly after. I didn't feel like messing around with a ferro rod anymore. I'm gonna let it burn down a little ways, get the bacon on there get eaten before it gets too late. I'd like to have a little bit of light to film that. It's really been fun trying to keep this camera dry and all this. It's really, really a wet snow. I'm surprised it's really stuck this much, but it is what it is, part of the adventure. I might have to put that, that bottom end up just so it sheds some of the snow, because it looks like even with that little bit of weight of powder on it, it's holding it down. Well, I used the grill that was already there, propped it up, made a little tripod end, and that should do the trick. I don't think I've ever ate a whole slab of bacon in one sitting before, but I will gladly give it a try. Well guys, down to the last five pieces of bacon. Uh, you haven't really missed much. I burnt, I burnt the first few of them and the other ones were okay, but the snow has not let up at all. In fact, it's just got worse. Um, we're probably at least at half an inch right now. Everything's just covered. I had to go over and uh, pull up the, the foot of my tarp, probably about a foot and a half, two feet maybe. But I don't know, my feet are like absolutely freezing. I'm just ready to get this bacon in my stomach so that I can 
throw like five, six logs on this thing, stoke it up and just get super warm. I'm gonna make this thing blaze and get really, really warm before I have to go to bed. It's like a freaking blizzard out here. I really should have brought my raincoat. Really regretting it now. I honestly usually bring it on every trip no matter if it's gonna rain or not, just in case. There's like a 10% chance of precipitation and I thought, oh, you know, it'd just be a little bit of snow flurries. Go figure, the first night of the year that it's actually sticking. So, mm, that was a good piece. Hey guys, just sitting here by the fire. It's about 7.30. Um, the snow has finally let up to where I'm not scared to turn my camera on. <laughs> it's, it's really not worth ruining my camera uh, to get a cool shot. And it was getting really soaked. The last few shots I took, um, I had this bag over top of it so it wouldn't get wet. But it's still coming down, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. So I'll take that. Uh, maybe it won't get too much worse in the middle of the night. But it's about 32 degrees out right now. It hasn't really gotten any colder. I'm going to probably take my shoes off, put my feet over this fire, uh, get them good and toasty warm and then go get tucked in for the night. So I guess that'll do it for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Morning, guys. It's about 7 a.m. right now. Slept pretty comfortably last night. It was about perfect. Um, it dropped to about 23 degrees, so not as cold as I thought. I feel like that's a reoccurring theme in every one of my videos. But you can't complain about that. But yeah, it was pretty comfortable. I feel like if it was any colder, I might have been chilly because I did get chills one or two times. But other than that, I mean, I was comfortable all night long. I'm just tearing down the shelter right now. I got everything uh, packed up that was in it. I just got to pack up, uh, roll up the footprint and the tarp, throw it in the pack. I still haven't eaten breakfast yet, so I'm going to boil that water and uh, eat some oatmeal. And I'm going to be moving with a purpose on that trail today. And that purpose is to get warm. Because there's nothing I can do right now to keep my feet warm. Uh, my toes are absolutely frozen already. Despite them being cozy, toasty warm all night long. <clears throat> and uh, just holding this camera film and my hands are just freezing. Uh, the hands I can warm up pretty easy. But my feet are pretty much not going to warm up until I get on that trail. Time to get packed up, get some food in my belly, and get back on the trail. Doing the old quick fold today. It's not going to be pretty. All right, everything else should be able to fit in the front pocket here. I got my sleeping bag, my quilt, my ground sheet, my tarp, and my pot in the main compartment here. I'm going to skip breakfast today. I just don't feel like it. I got this uh, protein bar or whatever it is I got for free at a race. I'm just gonna eat that once I get out on the trail, make up some time. Not been moving too fast this morning, but that's okay. I'm feeling pretty good, so I don't feel like I really need the breakfast. Pretty much all ready to go now. Just gotta throw my trekking poles on the sides, and then we'll be good. Well, the uh, plan for the route today is just kind of freestyling, meaning I don't really know where I'm going to go. I'm just going to check it out. I'm heading south from Camp 5 right now towards Pine Run, which is a creek that has posed some issues in the past of getting across. I'm not getting my feet wet today. They're already completely frozen, and I can't even imagine dipping them in water right now. Well, here's my stream crossing right here. I just looked at the map and as soon as you cross the river, you take a right and I can see the trail on the other side there. So it looks like it's a little bit skinnier up there though. So I'm just gonna walk down this side and uh, see if I can't find a better place to cross where I don't have to get my feet wet. Well, I guess I was wrong. Once I got to a spot where I could cross, which wasn't very far down here, 
looking on the other side of the trail it's so steep and the trail just disappeared and it looks like it's maybe not even a trail so I'm gonna go back the other way down the stream they really need to work on their maps I guess that's half the fun they make it a challenge it's a beautiful day out here right now I'm so glad I came out this weekend Ooh. I don't know I'm thinking about just getting my feet wet they're already getting warmer my toes are still numb but you know walking you warm up pretty quick so I'm debating just doing it but I'm gonna bushwhack down down here a little ways and see if I can't find something better to cross on this is tempting Too, too thin. This is kind of spotty. There's ice, ice and stuff through here, but there's tons of rocks. It's definitely like a really high shelf that's not getting a lot of water. But I'm across the, the main part now, so. This ain't that deep. All right, I'm across. It's pretty cold out. It's still, still in the low 20s, I can tell. The tarp setup I used last night worked out really well. I debated bringing a tent this trip because I actually bought a new tent. I'll probably be using that when I go out for my annual New Year's hike. But I'm not ready to unveil what that tent is yet. I'll give you some hints though. It's uh, considered ultralight. Didn't come with any tent poles and it's purple. Put it in the comments if you know what it is. You'll see it real soon if you don't. Back on the trail, done with the road walking. I'm gonna be coming up to site two here in about a mile, maybe two miles. Um, I remember there was decent places to cross the uh, creek there. Same creek that I crossed earlier, I gotta cross it again to get back on the side where my car's on. I'm the only one out here, I haven't seen anybody. There was one other person on the registry at the kiosk. Trying to figure out where I'm going to cross here. It's not looking very promising. I'm just going to do what I did earlier and just keep following this on down. See if I can't find a better place to cross. Seems to be like a little dam right here creating this little waterfall. I think it's all rocks. I can probably walk right over that. That's a wet foot. Not bad. One foot's better than two. That's not what the map shows. Doing a little road walk in here. The trail just came out on the road. And it definitely doesn't on the map. So even if that trail just does jet back out to the right, about a quarter of a mile walk, I'll be at the car. Well guys, that about does it for this trip. Uh, if you watched that whole video, thanks so much. Uh, it was a great trip. Finally got to do some snowy weather backpacking. But if you're not a subscriber, uh, click that subscribe button. I got tons more videos like this if you liked it. And until next time, we'll see you later.